Right. Well, this is the point that landscape architecture is the discipline that's well positioned to think about planning and ecology and infrastructure and all of these issues. But the thing that I I just finished a book. Landscape and architecture. But anyway, on landscape architecture? No, it's on oh. architects and landscape. But I but my prejudice and you can challenge me is to think that architects use the lingo from landscape architects mm -hmm. process and yeah. whatever. Um, but they use it metaphorically rather than mm -hmm. ecologically. And so that there's a fundamental, like, I don't know if it, it's like an appropriation of the words without understanding the spirit or whatever. So it seems to me that, um, well, in the history, in hit modern history, my, the point of my book is basically that landscape was always really central to the modern mm -hmm. idea. Um, but, but nobody ever recognizes it. History books never talk about it. And right. blah, blah, blah. So I think that, um, but I think that there's still, I mean, obviously there's many ways to be an architect and many ways to be a landscape architect. So that what you're saying about you only work with people, you know, whose work you like, it's, in, it's imperative, right? You can't, because if, you, if you're trying to work with somebody who thinks they know all about ecology and they're an architect, it's right. I'm pretty suspect of that anyway. Um, so it just seems to me like getting, I guess I'm teaching a seminar right now and my main purpose is just to get the students to understand that they better talk to landscape architects and they better understand what they're talking about but not try to be them. Right. Whatever. I don't mind that the boundaries between the disciplines are always shifting, but it just seems really so important now. That was like a fascinating no. book. No, I don't. I, mean, I, I don't. It. No, I don't disagree with, yeah. with any no. of that. I mean, I think. I mean, it is true that there's a kind of very facile appropriation of the language. I mean, I. You, you know, I. I mean, I first started talking about landscape. I, it was, I don't know. It was supposed to have been about I don't know 1996 or something. Um, and there was an exhibition of Dutch architecture at the storefront, mm -hmm. and I, I was thinking I was asked to moderate a panel or something. And I remember Winnie Moss saying that um, architects use the word landscape as often as Americans use the word fuck. <laughs> so, <laughs> this was 1996, right? right. So I hope that makes it to you too. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and, and you know, of course, I mean the Dutch. I mean that that was that was the sort of privileged entry into to the sort of landscape architecture uh, uh, conjunction. And you know, Aaron Betsky wrote this book. Um, yeah, I it's pretty super fun. Yeah, <laughs> I hope that makes it to YouTube too. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. Um, uh, but um, but no, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's. Um, um, I, I think it, the landscape architects gave up the role, though, to the architects like right. 20 years ago. Or 30, really? Yeah, I think I think they gave it up. Like there wasn't enough strength in the profession to kind of carry on the power of the role. So I think that's all changed. Uh, uh, red for me, especially with the super yeah, young switch, landscape but. architects. There's still, you know, only a handful of very progressive thinking arch landscape architects in the country. Oh, I know. So, you know, our, we have way less competition. Sure. Than so but it's also, it, it seemed to me, again, as somewhat of an outsider, that landscape architecture went through a fairly bad period, mm -hmm. sort of sort of 80s, early 90s. I yeah. mean, it was, where it was very narrative-based. I mean, there was a notion that landscape architects were trying to do kind of Second-hand versions of land art, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, or that, you know, sort of Alice Aycock, Mary right. Miss kind right. of, and then and then it's, you had people like Mary Miss sort of moving into the world of landscape in a way, and and also sort of appropriating that territory. So you're sort of squeezed from both ends. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I, I mean, I think that was why. I mean, a lot of the sort of sort of force of the sort of early arguments around landscape urbanism. We're, we're exactly about a kind of return to performance and ecology and to see landscape as something that that wasn't purely decorative and wasn't purely pictorial and wasn't purely uh, narrative based. Right. And, and that seems to me, I mean, most of the interesting work comes after that period mm -hmm. and it's kind of reacting to that, that moment. I, mean, I, may be, I may be exaggerating that, that no, description, I mean, I, but... Yeah, I think, it was, I think it was decorative and then it kind of became 
art and less spatial, right. uh, environmental art and less right. spatial. And I think right. now there's a, a young generation that's coming up that's going to radically right. take change their profession. Right. And I think architects right. in that period became very, I can do it all. And they were very focused right. on their object, even though they were speaking in landscape language. Right. Uh, and I think just the whole spirit of collaboration is changing. So I think there'll be a lot of very powerful landscape architect architect mm -hmm. collaborations mm -hmm. happening in the next. And there already is. I yeah. mean, there's a lot oh, of people know. just starting to oh. see every well, year. Well, there actually have been historically. Yeah. They just don't get talked about. Right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. There right. have been a lot. Right. Well, my my other sort of theory about that is that that in in some ways because landscape architecture had a less developed sort of institutional framework mm -hmm. that it, it was a little more agile and could actually change and and start thinking about different scales, start thinking about infrastructure, start thinking about ecology in ways that, that you know, arch I mean, architecture is a big cumbersome field with a lot of history and sense of sort of institutional weight and it's it's not as quick to, to, uh, to adapt and I think, you know, again, a handful of landscape architects made a kind of quick adjustment and moved very quickly into this territory. So. The decorative phase too that you were just talking about, what I think turned off architects immensely because yeah. the uh, it never related it never radiated out from the building. Like the, the, the landscape was completely separate from the architecture, right. which I totally don't believe in. I don't think that, I, you know, I think that's what most landscape architects think about architects. They're object fixated, they, they only work, you know, out, and I don't think that's true. I mean, I think you can find just as many great examples. Any good architecture is not that. Is what? Any good architecture is not that. No, but I just think that the projects are so much better when the landscape is actually... I'm not arguing against architecture, I'm arguing against landscape architects not relating to the architecture. I see what so, you mean. So right. my, I believe right. that a good landscape architect if the they, yeah, it is, is reacting to the architect. Is it both inspiring the architecture and reacting to the architecture right. so that the lines... Like our geometries are always reinforcing the architecture. We don't put like a s circle uh, in the middle of a plaza around a rectilinear building because it doesn't relate to anything. I can't understand why it would be there except for art, but that's.